So today we're going to look at piecewise functions. All right, so what is a piecewise function? So a piecewise function is a function that's made of pieces of another function. So let's look at this first example. Graph the following piecewise function. So if you notice our function is made up of two, two, two other functions. So the first function that's made up of is negative x squared. So we know what that looks like. It looks like a parabola. And then the second piece or second function that's made up, that makes up our function f of x is 3x minus 1. And again, we know what this function looks like. It's a line. So the pieces are determined by the x-axis. So if you notice, the beside the negative x squared, we have if x is less than negative 2. So this tells us what part of the domain of our function is represented by negative x squared. And then the second line, we have 3x minus 1 if x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So now on the other half of the x-axis or of the domain, our function f of x looks like 3x minus 1. So let's put it all together and see what our function looks like. So let's graph, let's draw our axes. All right, so we've got our axes here, so our y and our x. And let's look at our domain or x-axis. So our x-axis seems to be divided at the point x equals negative 2. So x equals negative 2, things change. So when x is less than negative 2, we have one function, negative x squared. When x is greater than or equal to negative 2, we have another function, 3x minus 1. So let's graph these two functions and see what happens. All right, so when x is, well, first let's graph the function negative x squared. So what does that look like? So it looks like the function x squared, our parent function x squared, reflected in the x-axis. So that means it's opening downwards. So at the point x equals negative 2, our negative x squared equals negative four. Let's say we look at the point negative three. And our function's going to look like I'll be at negative nine. All right. And let's just draw, well, not so pretty, but let's clean that up a little bit. So now that red curve represents negative x squared. All right, let's use another color and let's look at what at our second function, 3x minus 1. So 3x minus 1 is a line. So when x equals negative 2, the value of this line is actually negative 7. Seven there. When x equals 0, the value of our line is negative 1. So we'll put that in there. When y equals 0, the value of the x-intercept is actually, I think, a third. Then when, I think that's enough. We got three points. So if we join them up, the green line is the second half or the second piece of our function. Now let's look at our domain. So our x values. So when x is, so when x is, let's see, less than negative two, we have our function negative x squared. So that's the red curve. So we have our red curve until we get to x equals negative two and then it switches. But now if we look at the inequality, it's a strict inequality. So we have to put an open circle when x equals negative two. So we have an open circle at this point, negative two, negative four. And then from that point on, we no longer have our parabola open, opening downwards. Now let's look at the second half of our function or the second piece. So that's the line through x minus one. So our line starts when x equals negative two, but negative two, we have the point negative seven. And since we have an inequality greater than or equal to, we have a full circle or a closed circle there. And then from that point on, we have our straight green line. So that means any, any x value less than negative two, we do not have a line. So I'm just going to erase it. 
And this is what our final function looks like. So our function f at x looks like the combination of this red curve and the green line. So we have two pieces, two functions, and now we've graphed our piecewise function. Now let's look at the next example. So here they're asking us, given the following graph of a piecewise function, represent the function algebraically. So now we have the pieces and we, now we have to put them together and write down what the function looks like algebraically. Okay, so let's have a look what we have here. Okay. So I guess the first thing we can look at is the x-axis. So if we look at the x-axis, it looks like we have one function. It looks like it could, it looks like we have a function from negative infinity to three. And then at the point x equals three, it looks like it changes to another function. So that might be where, that might be where our function changes. Uh, so let's, so we have uh, x less than negative three. And then we have x greater than or equal to negative three. Sorry, there. So now we need to decide what functions we have in those two intervals. So when x is greater than or equal to negative three, we have a horizontal line. Uh, so that horizontal line, it looks like it's intercept, y intercept is three. I think that line, this green line here is y equals three. So our function equals three at that point or after that point. Now, when x is less than negative three, what does this function look like? It looks like two functions. It's actually one function. So what function is that? It's actually our inverse function, one over x. And the reason we can tell that it's a function one over x is because we were given this point, this point here, which looks like an open circle, three, one over three. So that's a good clue that the function for all the values of x less than negative three is represented by one over x. So we're going to put that in for the first piece of our function. So then we put it all together and we have our piecewise function. So our piecewise function is f at x equals one over x when x is less than negative three. And we have a strict inequality here because we have an open we have an open circle at the three coming from the one over x function and then our function f at x equals three when x is greater than or equal to negative three we know it's an inequality because we have a closed circle when x is at when x is part of this line y equals three then we have a an inequality, sorry, a strict, not a strict inequality, an inequality, a equal and a strict inequality. Okay, so that, okay. that brings us to the end of our piecewise functions. If you have any questions, give us, uh, send us a message or give us a call day or evening. And again, thank you for watching.